Hello everyone and welcome to the Dark Eye Adventures in Aventuria. I am filling in this week uh, due to unforeseeable circumstances. I've decided I want to take a shot at this legendary German RPG and so I've downloaded a copy of the Quick Start Rules and I've uh, drawn upon inspiration through my vast library of untapped RPG resources because I only use about 5% of the content that I purchase. Uh, but before we get into the game, and why don't we go around and introduce who we are and who we'll be playing. Jim, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, I, I, I don't have anything else other than that right now. My brain is about to run out of my ears and uh, pool and puddle in on the ground. Um, so yeah, I'm doing good. I'm excited to uh, to play. I'm going to be playing Garion today. This is one of his previous prior adventures, or maybe one in the future. Who knows? Uh, he is uh, an ephemeral uh, kind of character like that. Also joining, uh, joining us is our good friend Liam from the Mud and Blood podcast. Liam, how are you? Yeah, kia ora, hello. I'm all right. I'm all, I'm all good. Yeah, I'm good. It's Sunday. It's midday. It's nice. I'm chilling. We're good. Is this our <laughs> is this our our first game playing together, Liam? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So so now I'm under pressure. I'm going to get roasted on the podcast. Just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I, 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 they're going to be like, let's talk about what not to do in an RPG. So this asshole Grant Ellis showed up. It's my one swear word for the PG thirteen scene, and uh, thought he could run the dark eye. He's not. He's not worthy of that seat. Bring Susie back. Um, hopefully I do all right. And, you know, Sharong, uh, uh, Susie, and Emma are missed this week. Uh, but hopefully maybe they're in chat. Let's look around, see if we can find them. Uh, if you are, uh, F's in chat for Grant as he's about to run the Dark Eye. So uh, this is an adventure. Uh, did we determine if you're playing two or... Uh, the Dwarven fellow. I'm gonna. I just, you gotta stick with what you're comfortable with, man. I'm going two. I'm going All two. right. I, I was looking at playing a dwarf pre-gen, but um, every time I play dwarfs, they turn into Warhammer dwarfs, and I'm afraid of Germans, so I'm just gonna stick with two. <laughs> well, you are playing the dark guy, so uh, hearts to all of our Germans in chat, but break broken hearts for Liam. Um, mm. So uh, I, I, the way I start with a one shot is I normally write an adventure pitch, and so I'm going to read that out loud for you in the audience. Um, and uh, if I get the rules wrong, forgive me a little. And um, I've decided to uh, invoke the optional rule of no confirmation rolls. Um, if you if you roll a crit, it's going to crit because it's a one shot and uh, not a persistent campaign. Although one can dream. Uh, so rescue Lord Flatteroy and return him to the Wonder Spa Inn. Uh, beloved entertainer Lord Flatteroy is the key to the local area's economy, often performing three shows a night. So he's a popular entertainer. People come to the inn. He performs and people stay at the inn and buy all the ancillary services, of which there are many. Strong's not here to imply what they are. Um, <laughs> uh, but he's gone missing. And he's booked to perform this evening. Not only that, the Lady of Malthea's niece is getting married soon, and Lord Flatteroy was supposed to perform at the wedding. Not only that, he's on loan. He belongs to someone else, a, a friendly family. So if their beloved Lord Flatteroy goes missing, um, there may be a schism in the area. Um, <laughs> all signs lead to a pursuit in the woods, potentially. Um which is rumored to be haunted by ghosts and uh, spirits of soldiers from the last generation. Uh, the party has agreed to track Lord Flatteroy in exchange for the Lady Omalthia financing a trek from Perikim to Havina. Uh, so the name of our inn that uh, the party would be meeting at. So, so we know Lord Flatteroy's last whereabouts was at an inn known as Travia's Retreat. And then there's rumors that he took off in the night. So that's probably a good place to start. So everyone here has mm -hmm. been hired to and Garion to investigate, hoping they can get sponsorship. And so uh, the camera cuts from the uh, title text to preamble in some ancient script that's hard to read. Uh, the music transitions to, uh, I guess, the same music from... Uh, the Cafe El Slizo from the Muppet movie, and the camera kind of goes in. There's no Fozzie Bear, no Kermit. Um, but uh, you two and Garion find themselves yeah. in a 
in. It's kind of sparsely uh, patronized right now. There's uh, three or four patrons in there. One has a large gut and seems half asleep playing a game of cards uh, with a rather slim woman who has a wig that kind of tosses back and forth on her uh, lean skull. Uh, there is a musician who's uh, currently tuning their violin. Um, and there's an innkeeper behind a desk. She is currently wearing, uh, it looks like, yellow vestments and robes. Um, uh, she also has a white scarf around her neck and, um, she seems, um, uh, a little taken aback when you come into the, the inn. What do you do? Mm. Uh, so she's an innkeep. Does like, it sounds like she has she like, she's also maybe a blessed one, a priest. She is. Rather. She uh, looks as though she has affiliation with a religion. Okay. Well, Grind knows that there are gods, and he knows his gods. I'm sure he knows the others, but he has no skill in it. Um, is there like? Is it something that he would easily recognize, or mm. is this obscure? Offhand, um, let's see. Um, it's common. Uh, your guess. Um, you kind of uh you kind of overhear uh a, a call out from uh the violin who kind of looks back at her and goes little goose looks like you have guests i am not sure if any rooms are ready um but these uh these folks are coming in uh and you would know that the title of little goose refers to a novice in the church of travia oh okay and that her Yellow robe is the traditional uh, robe of someone who is the lowest rank of the religion. Okay, so Travia's retreat is mm -hmm. uh, that's a that refers to one of the, the gods. Okay, all right. Yes, I'm sure that Grind <laughs> remembers it later. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I can ask you without a roll. Um, do you would any of you assume that maybe you might have uh, some knowledge of Travia? I know twos. Maybe not from around these parts, but let's see. So they are. I'd also let you roll a skill if you want to chance it. What do you think, too? Uh, nah, it has disadvantages. Actually, he's he's unworldly to a lot of this stuff, um, <laughs> and specifically unworldly to Mittenheimer religion. So he'd know nothing about this. Yeah. Um, this religion or anything either. He's oh, our missionaries <laughs> haven't made our ways to your fine shores? <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> well, just give us a map, show us on the map where to go, and we're happy to send a ship. Right. <laughs> These godless barbarians worship all kinds of deities. When she sees you come in, she kind of motions, claps, claps to the back, and um, uh, you hear some uh, kerfuffle in the back of the inn as well. And she goes, oh, come in, uh, uh, blessed brethren. And because um, uh, if we don't, if it's a coin toss, we can start engaging and see what you can find out. She goes, I will have a couple of plates brought out at uh, one room or two. I'm fine with either. One is fine. Yeah, two's got no money. So Grian's paying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> One room smart. Where are you coming from, and who sent you? Uh, traveling through, uh, traveling through the uh, middle of the kingdom from Paracum. Mm. Nobody's, well, actually, that's not true. Someone did send us. You were sent here yeah. by someone. Are you the investigators? Possibly. I, I yeah. Uh, so hold on. At this point, sorry. I'm just quickly trying to read the names of the people we're supposed to be here for yeah we're we're, we're working for what was your name lady amalthia amalthia yeah i was in the yeah here uh in the uh in the uh he's in the two things are the right word uh uh employee of of uh uh who uh amalthia oh goodness gracious Oh, the good lady herself, a patron, patron to the end. She claps again. She's like, there's no charge for rooms. If you want two rooms, we'll, we'll get you two rooms. Uh, they they uh, have been paid for in advance. Bring out the works. She kind of calls back and just kind of like, she says, now, 
I hope you don't mind. Uh, but when the food comes out, I'd like to say a few words of thanks. Sure. You don't oh, mind, do you? You don't need to thank us. We are, we are, look, we're just doing our job. You don't need to thank us at all. We'll just eat the food. That's fine. That's yeah. all good. Oh, but it's part, of, it's part of a core fundamental. We should always thank Travia for the great bounty. Besides, you're my new friends, right? Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Yeah, yeah that, that sounds right. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, if you're going to feed us, then sure. Yeah. I'd, I'd imagine that, like, Grind, Grind's familiar with Travia only for, like, the, when they throw feasts. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Like well, and that's what you know too. Faithfulness and charity aren't usually his. his you know bag. that members of the church. You know, most people when they bless the food. For those of you following the core rules, page three hundred twenty-three has a food blessing. If someone from Travia's church blesses food, they can bless up to six plates at once. It's economical, wow. saves time, and yeah. um, and uh, one of those mechanical benefits is like the removal of poison or things like that, like powerful poisons. Uh, so if someone's trying to kill you, it's uh, helpful to have a member of this church in your corner. And their principles are kind of built upon friendship. Um, however, you can tell um, she'd love to get some conversions. Maybe I could find myself stratifying through the ranks of the church. Maybe I could climb. Uh, perhaps I could be God's mouthpiece. And she aspires. No, she doesn't say any of those things. Um, this is one of my <laughs> characters. This is a good NPC. Um, uh -huh. Yes. No ulterior motives. I, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I think that Grind, like, he's got his icons, right? He's got his, his sort of, uh, you know, of the, the gods that he does worship. Uh, one of whom is Raja. Raja, I'm not sure how uh, her name is pronounced. I would think mm -hmm. that the goddess of, like, passion and ecstasy and and sort of lust might have oh conflicts my. with a goddess of like faithfulness and and hominess i don't know yeah i mean uh, what happens in the bedroom is none of my business and who it happens with uh, glory be i mean god's the one that's going to damn you not me though um and uh she, she doesn't Watch say that all the time but her look does right? well hey i don't judge god does and in this case, mm -hmm. um, no, and then, uh, you know, the violinist goes, you might want to stop running your uh, mouth there, little goose. And then she's like, oh, sorry. Um, uh, so uh, they bring out some plates and like they have some delicious looking lamb kebabs just kind of like out. And, you know, there's uh, heaps of, uh, you know, uh, uh, it looks like uh, mashed potatoes with garlic. And uh, there is bread the size of like two's bicep and you know they're bringing out like some good food and they go well we had been there there was a night of festivity because uh the good lady herself lady amalthia was here last night uh pick up a delivery is that when, uh, where hmm? is that where uh falter uh, flatteroy was that he was oh. he there flatteroy he was here and he was singing um but uh, he seemed to stop after the second show. He seemed uh, something seemed to distract him, but I couldn't quite tell. I was I was busy uh, putting out a fire in the back. Ah, uh. and then like the you see like a burly like bulbous headed cook stick his head back. It's you know a dwarf looks up. He's like, "Hey, shut up about that! It wasn't a fire. It was under control." And he kind of slowly slinks back into the back. Mm mm mm. They've got a thing so, going on. It was a fire. So when he when he stopped. Was he, what, was he still here, or did he go? Was he just gone? Mm, I couldn't be able to tell you, but uh, perhaps uh, old Gus over there could, and the pot-bellied guy who's playing a game of solitaire uh, seems to be uh, not paying attention to the conversation. Mm -hmm. Solitaire, you say? He's got cards? He's got cards. Well... <laughs> He's got cards. Then maybe he fancies cards. a game. You'd like to get on a game too? You know cards? Um, I imagine two doesn't know cards, but he's willing to learn. Yeah, <laughs> the best way to learn is if one. Here's pro tip just use somebody else's money. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, he's got none. He's using yours. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, yeah, Grind will go over there and. Um, you know, offer a, uh, you know, cards, dice, what's, uh, I don't know, pick your poison. 
So he's gonna offer uh, what? What, was you, what did you call him? The guy uh, playing solitaire? Old Gus. Old, old Gus, Gus is playing. So old, old, old Gus is there, and um, he uh, he's like, so a couple boys like you like to play a game of traveling onion. You would know this is a game usually reserved for children. Mm. Well. I mean, we could do that. We could play something a bit more, I don't know, sophisticated. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. So, um, when you say sophisticated, you're talking about good old Boltan. Boltan is a very popular game. Sure, sure. Nothing, you know, we're, we're all friends here. I'm not looking for anything that's going to break the bank, but, um, you know, something to pass the time. And I think Garayan's sort of using this like he'll, if they're just playing for like pennies, you know, uh, you know, chits, bits, whatever. Um, he's mostly looking to like I'll play for your supper. <laughs> sure, yeah, that's fine. Um, to grease the wheels and get him talking more than anything. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, go ahead and make a, a a gambling check for me. Anyone that wants to play can can do a, a gambling check. Mm-mm-mm. Of course, of course, it uses sagacity, which is yeah. <laughs> he is the. I really, I really picked some stats for him that were not going to be conducive to his skills. That's fine. So he fucking botches it, oh, and no. this is because he doesn't know how to play. So he's just like, like, hey, hold on. is this hand good? <laughs> so like, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> He completely fucks it up. Right. <laughs> uh, let's see. I, I have to spend all of my skill points, but I can get it. That's QL0 or QL1. Yeah. Right. And so here we're going to talk about um, we're using we're using something a little special for here. We're going to do a cumulative group check. So we're all going to make the roll at the same time. Okay. Um, and mechanically, the way this works is we'll use the relevant skill and then add all of our uh uh, QL together, and then uh, see see what happens. And then, um, so essentially, the idea here is we want to be the first to get to ten QL. Um, and so, um, essentially, uh, you get the QL for not spending points. So, do you have any mm-hmm. points you're spending, or well, you botched, right? Yeah, too botched. Well, I fucked it up. Yeah. Uh, I, I need to look at apt, what aptitude means because it might mean that I have some points left over. So give me just a second mm-hmm. to uh, to check that out. That's one of my advantages that I have in gambling. While he's checking it out, is old Gus drinking? He's yeah, drinking. he is. Oh yeah. Uh, seeing Always. as we get free, we're getting free booze, right? So two's just going to start hooking this guy up it's gonna start getting booze in him just be like oh not so much he can't tell us the story later <laughs> but enough that he oh, might uh, yeah okay make friends. something very nice special bottle from the back and you know he sees you offer it, you offer it to him and you know takes it he you know smells it you know he pours it in a little glass he doesn't pick up the little glass but he swishes it around on the table it makes the most annoying noise um and, and um, kind of slurps some, just like sips it, sips it like a bird from a fountain, and you can see his eyes open up. He's like, "Oh my goodness, you must be in good favor to afford such a delightful bottle." So he doesn't tell him that we get free room and board while we're here. <laughs> Yo. Two does nick it though. He nicks it from the bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, you're some kind of, you're some kind of uh, lord. You're some kind of uh, statesman. He's trying to size you up because he's like, only a statesman could do something like that. Mm. Unless you uh, come, no. <laughs> yeah. uh, you don't know two's nobility, right? Like he's aristocracy. He's on a goodwill mission, right? Aye, aye, aye. Yep, traveled long and far to spread the uh, the kapapa of my uh, iwi, and uh, I'm here experiencing the local weirs and meeting their local special people. 
Everyone make another gambling check, but there's a modifier to this of uh, plus three uh, to raise your ability scores because you've given him some drinks, and he's like, if he's nobility and he looks as badass as he does, and he's giving me free booze, maybe I can lose a few hands because uh, I want to get in good graces. I want him to think he's doing well. Sure, sure. So my um, aptitude with gambling lets me re-roll one die. So okay. I rolled the uh, my second d20, which was where I was sinking all of my skill points into. And so my QL is now three instead of Ooh. one. You're about a third of the way there. So give it another it a dice room. game. Like dice is mine, but cards is fine. You know, cards are all right. Even with the um, even with the advantage on the second roll, I screw it up. <laughs> like, that's even better and this is like back. this is making him nervous he's like i really gotta lose maybe if i just show him my cards <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it's one of those things where in the fiction he's just kind of like oh oh nelly right uh i got another ql3 uh for mine good on you so um at, at this point um you're you're beating him you're starting to win you're starting to take him and he's like well, you uh, you've 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 cleaned me you've cleaned me fresh out. Oh, well, I think perhaps you uh, could earn some of this back if maybe you uh, filled us in on some details about last night. We're a little sketchy, lots of you know holes in the story. Were you here last night? Yeah, it was awkward. Awkward. Super awkward. So, kind of looks around. He kind of leans in. He's like, yeah gossipy goose in the back and uh snobby judgmental cook in the kitchen um mm -hmm. good for nothing violinist he says out loud and the violinist like breaks a string Bink! um and uh he goes so flatteroy is performing one of them old nostrian songs with you know he he holds the notes a little longer than he should he sings the words not the notes anyways um, if you know what I mean, and uh, this this uh, little number comes in, you know, a fancy boy with the silver eyes, and um, he he's one of them wood people. He comes right out of the wood, mm -hmm. and um, he he delivers a package to the good lady, the lady Amalthea, and uh, prettiest pair of boots I've ever seen, probably a wedding present, I assume. Flatteroy stops singing. Goes over and talks to the little sir. Little sir looks him up and down. Seemed to refuse him. Flatteroy seemed to press. A boy took off because he wasn't feeling too comfortable. Mm. Flatteroy followed him into the night. Mm. I haven't seen him since. Hmm. Is he... Do we get a sense that he's talking about, like just someone that lives in the woods or is it this like a fairy elf kind of situation he he lives in the woods but there are fairies in the wood i mean there's the lady lola there's um <laughs> that old old bugger uh cranky cook in the kitchen's ex-wife ortha uh -huh. that you know the lad he he works for her he studies under her he's trained to be a a uh like a boot maker. Ortha, she she damn near makes anything. This century, she's learning smithing. You know, long lives. She has all this time to practice different trades. Sure, sure. She master craft. And so he's working on moving up from his apprenticeship. And to do that, he has to present a lord or a lady with a, well, fancy set of boots. And they have to accept it. Okay. So he's from around here. He's from around here, you know, it's about half days walk into the woods, you could find. He he's, he stays at Ortha's place, that's where he studies. But, you know, there's other folks in the woods. Who? Hey. Well, there's the ghost, he says in a hushed tone. He's like, there's the ghost. He goes, there's them woods, they're, they're haunted. But, uh, um... Oh, Tapu. Oh, how haunted? Why? Um... They protect the woods from outsiders coming coming from the north. So, long time ago, there was an army that tried to march uh, march on this good region, and the soldiers stayed and defended these woods, these lines for nearly thirty days, 
Many of them starved and froze in the winter. But their ghosts, they still guard those woods. They are pledged to defend it to their dying days. But there's also uh, other, uh, uh, you know, uh, other other tough men, big fellas, you know, about your size, his size, you know, strong folk. They're not lords like you. They're not nobles. They're not, you know, dignified in any sense of the word, but they enjoy their lives. And um, Elabon, the little lad uh, with the silver eyes, uh, he was one of them before he decided to take up take up the crafts. Okay. Two leans towards Garion. What direction did we come from, Ihor? East. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. We should be okay, I think. Garion has no idea. He's never seen a ghost. Thinks he's like ghost ghost. Not a, you know, like not uh it's like a real ghost, right? Not like wood chimes or you know, people just fooling each other playing tricks on each other but a real ghost he's trying to talk get like more information out of gus maybe gus knows more about these ghosts i don't spend much time in the woods but when i was a boy i was in the woods and i seen them the skinny men they're these skinny men spears shields murderous terrifying they move quicker than they should like like their flesh has rotted off Okay. Like their eyes are sunken and pulled out of the sockets. Sounds well, it's fine. It's a real shame if they really went that way. Whoever finds him, good luck to them. <laughs> 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 Can we get another? You know, like call over for another uh, another yeah, drink. <laughs> they bring another bottle and like, um, uh, little goose brings it over, and you know she. She seems kind of like a little, like annoyed that you're spending so much time with Gus. And then she's like, "Well, you know, um, saints often share the same table as the sinners." And she eyeballs Gus, who's like, <laughs> uh. "Wait till she leaves." It's like she's a little sanctimonious, like just you know, she doesn't care for you to hanging around here. Oh, she can't get rid of me. Uh, my family's the deed owners of this inn. It's on loan to the church. I didn't know that. You should have. You should have led with that. <laughs> well, it uh, doesn't mean uh, I currently have hold of the deed. That's my brother who lives back east in uh, uh or west in Havina. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. You gonna play another round or what? Yeah, let's play another round. Make another gambling check. Yeah. This is for all the keeps. All the keeps. All the keeps. No bonus to it. He's trying to win. He wants to take you for everything. Mm. You roll two ones. That's a critical success, right? Yes. Yeah, two that shocked everyone. <laughs> <laughs> two wins. Yeah, just like oh, shit. <laughs> he pushes it, and he he has to like go and let, like they bring out like a whole hog for two like it's got the apple in the <laughs> mouth it's been roasted nice it's perfect and then old gus has to go wash dishes for the next month to pay for it because <laughs> <laughs> my hands weren't made for washing they'll wither oh that's great that's good i i only got two two quality levels on that one but uh no, he's taking yeah let fat, quick learner too <laughs> hustled I- Card right, shark. Not hustled card shark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, right. That's like I said, it's a simple game, you know. <laughs> so here are some things you know. So Flatteroy uh, had soft eyes for uh, a man that came in who is kind of like a pretty boy who works as an apprentice, uh, leather worker and cobbler. Mm-hmm. It is studying under a dwarven woman named Ortha, who used to be married to the cook in the back. Um, Ortha lives in the woods. There's also other people that live in the woods, and there might be ghosts. They also mentioned that there is some sort of fae spirit that might be in the woods, which may or may not be true. Right. I mean, I think it's safe to assume that there's fairies in every wood, just to, you know, be careful. Um, is it, what time of day is it? 
So currently, uh, I would say it's uh, mid afternoon by this point. Okay. Plenty of light. Yeah, Summertime. I'm gonna go poke around some too. See what we can find. Might as well. Um, did we? The impression we got was that um, Flatteroy, when he uh, approached this kid, it was um, relatively sort of yeah, like it wasn't with any hostility or anything like that. And they seem to know each other. Yeah. It seems the the information got from Gus. They didn't really know each other that well, and Flatteroy had probably become intoxicated over the night because he likes to drink a lot while he sings. Uh, helps him deal with the nerves. Not to mention the Lady Amalthea was there, so he was like uh, on extra, uh, and the intoxication led to some brazen behavior. Mm, okay. Right. Uh, oh, might as well have a look. We'll yeah. go have a look. I will warn you though, two is superstitious, so if those those ghosts turn up, it's a disadvantage. Is. So um <laughs> it should be perfectly fine. Like you know, these rural folk, all kinds of spirits and whatnot. Should be fine. No problem. <laughs> you say that, and you're thinking, look, there's all these stupid spirits, and two sitting there going, fuck, where I come from, there's heaps of spirits. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> what are you talking about, stupid spirits? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't piss these things off. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like, Garan spent a lot of time just in woods, but mostly fighting, you know, his, his experience of it is, like, very mundane and practical. Uh, so that's what I think that's where his uh, his head's at. Um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, I I think can we take some of this food and uh, drink with us? Uh, absolutely. Uh, right. The little goose uh, makes you some nice pouches, and these are like nice ornamental bags. They they're you know they're like proper handbags too. This is fancy, you know. Um, Essentially, your equivalent of a dark eye merce, you know, your man purse that they've made sure. for you. These are special, you know, and they're like woven. And, you know, I made them myself. And, you know, there's a little goose embroidered on them. And uh, mm -hmm. they're, you know, orange, orange and green weave. I see. I see. Well, thank you. Uh, do you. Would you like them back? Oh, yes, I would love to have them back. You could deliver them on the uh, seventh day. There's a little church at the end of the via. Just pop on in, uh, let them know at the door that uh, I, 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 I invited you. <laughs> the look on Liam's face, he's like this gosh darn manipulative conniving... <laughs> It sounds great. <laughs> you ain't getting no fucking bags back from two. That's right. <laughs> Takes a shit in the bag, gives it back. Ha! Take the shirt. <laughs> Those are my holy items. Don't desecrate them. Right, right. Um, yeah, so Grind's just going to, I don't know, light up a cigarette and uh, head outside. All right. Well, um you you see the uh, the woods before you. Um, there's a chance that you could try to track uh, Flatteroy's uh, steps and look for signs of any scuffle, or you know you would be able to tell because it was the night before. Not many people come and go, and you know which way you came. Uh, the woods are you know off like thirty degrees. If you were to draw straight lines, it's like ah they would be off that way, and they would have gone out, probably right. pursuing each other. Or maybe well, signs. Two's got its tracking. He also has um, the advantage of well, the general special ability of area knowledge um, forests. So I don't know if that makes a difference. Um, yeah. I'll go with a go. I've got a tracking roll. I can do this. I reckon I've got this. Yeah. Oh, I'm actually, hold on. It depends on what, what stat that needs. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, that goes down to quality level two. Hmm. So, uh, you're making the way in the woods. You can see clear signs of um, Elamon's entrance from the woods. You can see which direction he would have come from, which means uh, 
his and Ortha's cabin would be off uh, to the west. Uh, you can also see very clear signs of a chase because you find uh, torn fabric, and the fabric looks to be from uh, fine clothing. Uh, it's you know kind of blue. There's some silver sequin on it. It's it's just kind of like this is definitely a performance attire. It probably got caught on a uh, you know caught on the brambles as they stumbled after each other into the night. Um, and you can see it goes far far north, uh, and um, you can choose if you'd like to continue following that trail or branch off and check out Ortha's. It's your decision. You essentially can see um, at Flatteroy himself for sure. You kind of lose track of uh, the young lads running, but you can definitely see that Flatteroy is booking far north. Mm. So Flatteroy is the one with money. Elamon was the one who no one really knew about because he's an obscure boy from the woods. Sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, two would relay that. Um, I mean, we are ultimately we're here to find Flatteroy, so two yeah. is inclined to keep following him. If we lose the track, maybe come back and and ask if the boys turned up. Yeah, that make that that's uh that's good. Sounds like a good idea. Like it's it's pretty easy to find Orthas, you know. Like we could easily make our way back here. You could make it no problem. Cool. Cool. Yeah, let's see where the trail ends. Particularly with mm. two. Ah, so you travel the woods uh, far north and they get thicker and thicker. Then you come to a clearing. You come to uh, what looks like a bridge that is mostly largely collapsed. Um, you can see very clearly um, muddy tracks on the bank, um, but only one set. And uh, the water here is uh, running pretty strong. Um, but essentially the trail, uh, it looks like uh, it ends at the river's edge. Um, it looks like whoever was going across. And what I'm referring to a river, most people in the United States would probably call it a creek or something like that. It, it's big, but it's not, you know... Mm -hmm. It's not like hundreds of feet. It's sure, like sure. It's not feet. the Mississippi, right? Yeah. And um, yeah. So so essentially, there you can see that a bridge was there. The bridge had been destroyed. Um. And so, but, to continue to follow the trail, you'd have to find a way across the river. Like recently destroyed, or just like washed out, or or what? Um. Describe how you'd like to determine. When so went out. Grian's his specialty is like partisan, irregular, you know, kind of uh, warfare. Like I think, imagine he's destroyed a bridge or two, taken out a, uh, you know, something like that in his uh, his uh, freedom fighter days. Um, you know, does it look like that, or does it like? I guess what he's looking for is like axe axe marks on any support posts or or something okay. like that. Like it was a deliberate or it just like. It looks like, or yeah, it looks like hitch knots that were used. You know, if you're going to tie a rope to a thing, you would tie a hitch as opposed to a lash. That's for mm -hmm. you in the audience. If this adventure stinks, you at least learn the difference between two knots. Um, so, <laughs> so um, lash two ropes together. Hitch, you're tying a rope to a thing. Um, but um, you can tell that the hitches were uh, pulled up and off and dropped. The rope wasn't cut. So someone would have taken the rope, pulled it up, and thrown it to make the bridge less stable and probably kicked it out of place. Ah, okay, okay. Well, not only can Gran not swim, he's actually terrible at it. It's one of his uh, uh, what's it, what do you call it? Negative aptitudes, um, or uh, yeah, incompetent at swimming uh, is what he is. So, like a swift flowing sort of like, is it deep? It's deep enough to have a. a you would bridge. need to swim across. Yeah, so I don't know about that. Like, I can't swim too. I don't know about you, but. Like I'm terrible at it. Never, never even tried in my life. <laughs> uh, two can swim. Um, it's let me have this quickly look at the stats that it's involved. Um, okay, he's actually got. He's actually probably a, a fairly good swimmer. He's got uh, four points in it, but they're all strong stats. Um, that said, he's not in a hurry to swim across if he's going to leave you behind. Um, right. Unless it looks like. Swimming across would give the opportunity to repair the bridge. 
Um, you could repair the bridge from this side if you wanted to as well. It would be a woodworking check. Uh, Might take a little bit of time, um, but it could be done. Okay. Woodworking is also something two can do. Yeah, I, I don't have any points in it, but they're all they all key off of things that uh, Grian's like good at. It's a very physical task, looks like. Yeah. Okay, okay let's give it a go. Oh, let's well, give it a go. So yeah. we'll give it a go. Give it a shot. It's got, it's got two good stats in it. Four points. So. Uh, oh no, no, not good enough for three sixteen. <laughs> let's see. Do you have any fate points to re-roll or? Um. Yeah, because you spend them to re-roll, you don't spend them to adjust the roll, right? Is that how it works? Here's essentially how it works uh, fictionally. The better you roll it, the, uh, you're going to build the bridge. A failure simply means it takes a bit more time, and there may be consequences if the clock is always ticking. Mm -hmm. um, with that said... Um, uh, you know, you could you you could re-roll a die with a fate point. Is it a single die or is it all three? Uh, re uh, with a fate point, it's any number of dice. Okay. You just well, can't re-roll a botch. In that case, I'll re-roll all three. Because it's a one shot. There's no point holding on to fate points. No. So there you go. I'll give it a go. Here we Spend go. Spin the Come points. Uh, fuck yeah. That'll do it. I only have to... Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. That gives me three points, which is quality level one, I think. All right. So... Um... Uh, essentially, uh, not only do you repair, repair the bridge faster, it's much safer than if you swam. And by taking a little bit extra time here, you're going to save time later. Because you know the only other safe crossing point would have been much further down. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good. I'd have to spend a faint point as well uh, to, to make that a success. Uh, All right. But yeah, you can help out. He's not useless. Yeah, you're you're totally helping out. It's one of those things where uh, uh, you you uh, get good wood. You use the remains of the bridge. You set it up, and it is now safe to cross. Bridge never looks so nice. Yeah, they should pay us for this. You know, fixing their bridge, it. leaving it better than when we found it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. civil service. We should get a, a share of the rights. I think. Exactly. We should get a medal, parade. Like <laughs> Charge them, <laughs> invoice them for it. Be like, oh, by the way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this it. If we can't find um we can't find flattery, we were like, oh we fixed the bridge. <laughs> you spend the next away. spend the next week hanging out in the inn doing odd jobs, like all right, yep. that got a leak. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Ortlieb takes over the kitchen. Oh gosh! Right. Yeah. yeah. Once they catch up, yeah, it's a good. Yeah, it's a good thing. Tariq, Tariq works the back room. Of that uh, silver-eyed lad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's off doing something. Else. He he went to go track down a lead on some perfume for us. Mm -hmm. Smell like the road. for the wedding. Oh, we must bring a wedding gift. If I'm going to get a wedding gift, it must be a good smelling perfume because they must smell it, uh, immaculate on the wedding night. And just like, whew, there it goes. There he goes. Um, yep, there he goes. Uh, okay, great. So you prepared the bridge. You repair the bridge and um, uh, the trail leads to the woods. It is at this point you find a large gathering of uh, unidentified tracks. The uh, footprints here are uh, much larger than Elamans or Flatteroys. Um, and it is at this point, uh, Flatteroys footprints disappear. Elamans do not. Um, and these large treks go back deep into the woods. Mm. Well, the woods thicken Flatteroy. here and darken as well. So it's full of shadows and is blocking out most of the sun. Okay. What could possibly go wrong? Yeah. <laughs> we light the woods on fire. What's on the other side? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We wait for uh, them to burn down. No, we'll sit. We'll wait. We'll so, it's, <laughs> so it's like Flatteroys, like we just, like two just can't make out what it is, or they just. They disappear completely. Just, Disappear completely. Okay. I wouldn't make two roll again. He can perfectly track Flatteroy. And okay. um, if there's, you could maybe do a sagacity check if you want to put two and two together. If you think you have a skill that you're trying to figure out, I'd tell you if it would apply. 
I, I, I there's no way I'm going to pass the guess, but I'm going to absolutely just go out on a limb and say he's um he's being carried at this point. That's what you're correct. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah someone sense. picked him up. Oh, picked him up. Okay, yeah. And Elamon went with whoever picked him up. They didn't pick up Elamon. There's okay. no um there's no sign of like blood or anything. Like he wasn't knocked over the back of the head too hard or. There's some like blood, but it seems residual from like thorns and thickets, not like he was hit. Okay. All right. As okay, far as you can tell. Yeah. Either uh, way, still picked up. Generally speaking, you're not carried. Uh, if you walk somewhere and you arrive of your own free will, you're often not carried out. So, sure. <laughs> that doesn't, you know, yeah, it doesn't bode well. What about these other prints? Are they like, what are we? Can you tell anything about them? Yeah. I mean, how big are, are we talking? Because you said they were bigger. How big is big? So yeah. if. um. If I was to make a comparison from this world, it'd like be the difference between my feet or Jim Davis and like a professional basketball player. So like okay. uh, considerably larger, but not abnormally huge. Yeah, okay. okay. So it's and they're like n- not heavy people. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thick boys or thick women, thick people. Mm-hmm. And how many of you roughly? Uh, looks like seven sets. A few, yeah. yeah. Quite a few. That's not nothing. Um, will I be able to make a cheeky like survival check to tell if there's anything off about any of the feats? Like try and get an idea of um, like are any of them walking wounded? Is there any signs? Absolutely. That one of them's carrying more weight than the others. I'm imagining at least one of them is for sure. Um, okay. Uh, Uh, okay we are we are good but only one quality level just okay so here's what you can tell uh the whole lot of them were fishing in the area that's what you can tell so it doesn't look like they were here expecting a fight it seems more like uh they were doing a little night fishing and um uh, it led into uh, some sort of conflict that ended up with Flatteroy being carried off. Okay. All right. So, going to go full Sherlock Holmes here and make a deduction based off what we've seen. Uh, Silver Eyed Boy was being hit up by Flatteroy, didn't like it, uh, and led Flatteroy towards a place he knew forest folk are likely hanging out to get a bit of help. And forest mm. folk did him a solid and picked up Flatteroy and took him off somewhere safe. That's That's my best guess with the information we've got. It makes sense. So, yeah. naturally, in classic player character fashion, we're going to have to go find these forest folk and violently murder every one of them to get, yeah. <laughs> to get just, yeah. right back. No, um, start sharpening his sword. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to get some killing done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, on the, uh, yeah. They might be grateful for us to turn up and take Flattery off their hands. We just might have to go see what's going on, I guess. Yeah, I think that's a good way to approach it. Like, hey, we're here to take this guy uh, off your hands. That's what kind of I like brought food and drink with them. Maybe we can use that to uh, to barter or parlay or something like that. Mm. Mm. Um, but yeah, lead on. All cool. right. The woods... Um... Uh, are blocking out most of the sun. Um, There is a light fog in some parts, um, and it looks as though their treks go uh, directly into the fog intentionally. You can see they're only trying to move in through uh, the fogged portions of the woods. Um, Make... uh, Any of you can make a magical lore check. Um... Ooh. No, I don't have anything. I mean, it, it, I'm not trained in it, and they're not, they're not key off of Yeah, if neither of you have that, um, it's fine. I, I need to know, do you follow the treks directly, or do you try to follow them outside of the fog? Um, okay, so 
Okay, it's, it's no secret that I've based two on my own culture somewhat. And mm-hmm. it's generally believed within our culture, that uh, within some tribes anyway, that within the fog is where the spirits of your ancestors are. Um, and we're also an ancestor worshipping people. So those are those are someone's ancestors and two's going to respect them. So he'll skirt around the fog oh, looking yeah. for trails coming out. Okay. Um, yeah. You're following, uh, you can see that uh, those, uh, the heavy prints, the large prints, uh, stick to the fog, um, and you come to, uh, essentially, uh, a clearing. In the clearing, there seems to be a large figure, uh, silhouetted, um, it's dark, they are wearing heavy robes, they stand about two feet taller than Garion, um, and uh, they're wearing a cape of thorns. It looks like so thorns and horns and just they're there and they stand very majestically and very still. What do you do? This is about maybe 30, 40 feet off. Are they in our way or like off to the they're side? They're in the middle of the clearing. Okay. Staring at the direction you're coming from. They seem to be aware of us. Um, uh, as far as you can tell, they are looking right at you. Okay. And the tracks are going right to them? Yes, you can see the tracks come out of the wood and um, go past this point. All right. What, um, real quick, what le- visibility level are we at? Would you say it's, there's four levels, goes from light foliage, morning fog, up through like dense smoke, complete darkness. I would say right here, it's it's morning fog. It's not it's not like 100% clear, but uh-huh. the light's not great. You're not in a uh-huh. real foggy area, but you're in an obscure thicket of woods. You're at a clearing. It's yeah. dark. It's dim. Okay. Yeah. Then, yeah, Garion's night blindness <laughs> uh, makes that one step worse. So for him, it's like, it's it's functionally like moonlight. Yes. Uh, like looking at someone in moonlight. So he's kind of like, is that a, is that, is that like a scarecrow? What is that? You know, I'm not sure he would register that it's even a... Person. Thinking it, thinking it's a scarecrow. Um, that's your assumption, right. and it's one of those things where uh, two can tell because two can see more clearly at the word scarecrow. This is an effigy of some sort that was put here. It's not an actual creature. Uh, this okay. looks like someone built something, put it here as a sign and a warning. Mm. It looks okay. Well, let's go have a look. How recent does it look though? Does it, does it look like it was? We don't. It's recently? been here a long time. Okay. <sighs> I don't, this doesn't seem, uh, well, I don't know. This seems like some spirit stuff, doesn't it? <laughs> when you say that, <laughs> so it's like, we're going around the clearing, uh, I ain't going in it. <laughs> all right, all right. So, yeah. <laughs> it is top boot. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. All right, I think I'm picking it up. Uh I think Grind's gonna like light a lamp at this point. Okay. Because if it's getting on in the day, right? Like you, it's... Yeah, you, dusk is approaching. It's not quite here, but it is on All its right. way. Yeah, he's gonna reach into his pack and he's got like a small uh like a small oil lamp that he's gonna light. Put the cloudy glass over uh, over the top of it. Cool. When you light the lamp, you can see silhouettes moving behind the trees in the woods, and when the lamps uh, lit, it kind of retreats slightly, and you can hear the rattling of uh, wood, metal, and bone. <laughs> Toots. Toots. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like weapons are up at this yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> looking around, like, uh... like yeah, oh. like like silhouettes, like like pe- person shaped. It's hard to tell they moved quickly, but they're definitely bipeds. Okay. Two, yeah, so two, two has his weapon up and he's doing a, a like a, a karaki, like an incantation, just really softly under his breath, but his eyes are wide and he's oh. just like looking around, clearly a bit on edge. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think there's something out there, like something other than the woods, pe- wood people. You hear a crunch of the leaves behind you. Turn around with the light. Turn around with the 
light, and about 15 feet away, you see three bony men with spears and shields marching slowly to the clearing. Oh, like menacingly? They don't like that you're here in the woods. They don't like that you lit a lamp. Oh, okay. Um, he's like, Garion doesn't have his weapon out. He just has the lamp. Uh, he's going to like, if they, if they like indicate that it's the lamp, he'll, he'll, you know, try to like set it down or set it to the side. He's like, I, you know, I can't you... see. Can I get you something? Can I offer you? They see you set the lamp down and no the lamp down with no weapon drawn. They just go coward and roll initiative. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. No, oh, you're um... fine. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. So for initiative, I have an initiative score plus one d six. So I have an initiative of thirteen. Okay, um... fifteen myself. Uh, I have 16. Yeah. Mine's up being 17 with the D6 roll. Yeah, once I had the D6, mine goes up to 21. Yeah. Woohoo! So, let's, um, let's go highest or lowest. It sounds like, uh, the skelly men are going lost. There's definitely three on this side. Possibly more in the woods beyond. Right, yeah. Yeah, I'm just putting it down to, like, two skittishness. Right, like he's just like fucking spirits, fuck, 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 and then yeah. just like, just like, no, if in doubt, fucking take him out, <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah. So they're armed with shields. Anything else? Uh, spears. Okay. Okay. Well, it's a good thing I got a pole on my guess then. Um, Mm. In that case, I guess two just, unless I can think of something slightly more intelligent to do in this situation. Um, alertness, combat reflexes, faint, forceful blow, takedown. Yeah. No, I'll just, um, two's just going to run at them. He's got a high, his courage is his highest stat. So he's just going to run at them and start to smack in uh, the first one he comes to, really. Um, and just take to it. Make a smack. Alright, so, um, alright. So I have to roll below my, the required stat, right? Is that correct? I believe so. Okay. Uh, I got bang on it. I don't know if that's a failure or a pun. We'll say meat speeds for the purpose of this. Chat, you can correct okay. me. I'll still play cool. it wrong, to spite you. <laughs> it's equal to or less. Okay. <laughs> it's chat. Everyone leaves, stops watching. They're like, ruin my game. <laughs> um, I hit it for seven points of damage. Ah! You, uh, and what weapon did you hit it with? Uh, my quarterstaff. All right. Your quarterstaff cracks the bone and crunches uh, the uh, decrepit marrow that remains, uh, shattering some of the skeleton's frame. He still holds together and does not fall apart upon you. Garion, what do you do? So I've got a, uh, a long sword here, um, which I'm, pr I'm fairly confident is, doesn't have the reach of a spear, but uh, he's pretty light on his feet and has a specialty in like combat maneuvering. So he'd like mm -hmm. to do is like, see if he can't use his shield and like duck under and get inside their guard. I think uh, that's allowed. Okay. I'm not sure if I, I'm not sure how much I can do in a combat round yet, but um, that's body control combat maneuver is what he's got. Uh, let's, Which I'm let's... guessing that's what it is. Cause these combat techniques are like faint and power attack, things like that. Yeah. Give it a shot. Okay. Let's see. Body control, agility, agility, Con, let's do this. So that's all, those are all the same. <clears throat> okay, so did that. One of them, he's gonna have to use his points for seven. Yeah, so he gets it with one QL. Excellent. So uh, you're you're in there. I'm going to imagine the way this looks is it kind of jabs with the spear. You knock up uh, the spear with the shield and then just bring in uh, your blade and cut at, you know, sort of the uh, 
sagittal trunk of his spine, right. <laughs> if I remember my anatomy. Um, so, <laughs> wait, wait, let me go ahead and make an actual attack roll real quick. Yeah, I give that a. Sh- uh, it's ten. I'm pretty sure. Even if any even with any penalties for light, uh, that is gonna. Yeah, that's underneath his uh, his longsword skill. All right. So roll damage. Yes. This is oh, wow. D six plus four. I rolled it. Six plus four is ten. It's like you max. cut through the bone, and um, uh, he attempts to lunge forward with his uh, spear and ends up falling over in half. The skelly man is no more. Oof. Angry, too. Calling yeah. out on the floor. And then he just is like, not a coward! <laughs> I didn't want to hurt you. Should have required you to draw your weapon. No. <laughs> 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 Get three free attacks. Um, right. <laughs> yeah. He, I think that like, if there is any way, like, I don't know, they don't seem like we could reason with them. Right. Like they, they're sort of like vengeful spirits of the dead sort of thing. Depends. Um, there's a couple things that trigger that makes them upset. Um, uh, they, they are attempting like to guard the woods. They don't like your lamp. They don't like you. Um, they don't like people moving past the effigy. Um, there are a few things that agitate these skeletons because they're here in the woods. They There are, depending on the choices you make in the adventure, there's certain ways past them. Um, okay. Okay. With non-combat ways. But um, sure. yeah, so you probably wouldn't be able to reason with them. Um, well, not having, not having gotten two of them down, I imagine. But. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to move to the skeleton side. So uh, there's still two of them remaining and uh, one would make an attack uh, they succeeded on the attack on two, and then the uh, uh, the second one uh, would succeed in an attack on Garion. So just the way this worked, you defend, you parry. Yeah, you get one free defense, either dodge or parry. And then if I forget, you take penalties if you want to do more than one. Yeah. Uh, if I'm remembering. Where is that at? That's on page uh, 232. So... Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm, I'm actually going to do this right this time. I'm much better at parrying than dodging, so I'm going to try that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to use his shield to do that. Two. Yeah. Uh, parry. Oh. There you go. I'm assuming that's what, yeah, that's what PA is mm-hmm. on our sheets. There we go. Nope. Nope. He does not manage to block with his shield. So the spear. Uh, reaches through and catches uh, Garion off balance and you would take uh, nine points of damage. 1d6 plus four. So I got chainmail, which is protection four, which I'm assuming is going to knock that down to five. Mm-hmm. All right. So he hasn't, he's not any anywhere near losing his uh, uh, pain level one. And besides, he's got a bunch of things that lets him ignore that. Um so yeah, so he'll take the uh, the five. Alrighty. Um, with that, um, you see now in the clearing, the effigy is now uh, lit and is glowing with a blue flame. Oh. After it hits me? Um, sort of a, yes, after you get hit, um, there's a dead skeleton one uh, looks as though he's about to crack in half. Uh, there's a third, and then there is a blue flame on the other. Now, uh, two, I'd let you make a perception to see if you can tell why it's burning in flame. Absolutely. Um, does this, by any chance, does this have anything to do with being ambushed or, or surprised? I would count it. I would say that, yes. It was surprising okay, cool. and part of an ambush. I've got alertness, so um, that gives me a, an extra quality level if I succeed. Um, got something called vigilance that I cannot find where I have. Let me see. I believe we're going to be pretty good. What's the last intelligence? Luckily, this is a very good state of mind. So even though I took a, a bit of a knock there, I still have three quality levels. All right. Um very good. So 
you see, um, and your eyes go through the woods, you can tell that there was a, uh, from a, from a range, there was a man with a bow and an arrow, and he, uh, had lit an arrow and shot the effigy with it. He's trying to essentially scare you off, making you think that the effigy is some sort of spirit that is becoming angry, but it's a fake. He's just trying to, uh, scare it off, and as it, uh, ignites though uh the skeletons seem to respond to this as well um they may or may not hang in the area uh because well they're not used to seeing this thing set on fire sure okay okay um so they're looking like they might withdraw is that is that the impression we're getting uh garayan your military mindset would tell you it's not so much withdrawal what it's going to do is prevent them from following any set guidelines and they will go based on chaos they will attack whoever is close or near okay all right so they are their their uh, cohesion is disrupted then yes Something like that okay okay Ooh. all right two's up two is gonna um he, he screams at the top of his lungs, I see through your lies, and then he's going to crack this thing in front of him really hard. Um, Get so him. let's see if I can fucking pull it. Oh, why am I rolling three dice? Let's see if I can do this shit. So, uh, <laughs> um, five, that will hit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's another, assuming he doesn't block or dodge. Um, that's no, he another, failed. Uh, that is... Seven damage. Another seven damage. Yeah. Describe how you destroy this skeleton. Um, well, I've always imagined his quarter staff is what we call a tire here in New Zealand. So it's sort of like carved. Looks a bit like a spear. It's got like a tongue on one end and a big blade on the other. Um, and being a, a skeleton, I sort of like a, he, he'd be treating it the same as if he's fighting a person. So he'd be striking it on the side of the knee. So it, like the knee buckles and as it does, he'll bring the other side up and smack it on the chin, knock his head off its fucking, <laughs> off, off its neck. Um, oh! and, and then, like a finishing blow where he sort of stabs down with the tongue end into its chest. And when he does so, he's doing a fierce. He's going full like, yes. he does it. And he, <laughs> he's still yelling like to whoever fired that arrow, I'm yeah. coming for you. You all fuck that dicks! You know, <laughs> like he's oh, quiet up. <laughs> like this, so, yeah, that's, I mean, I think Garion, first off, this immediately, too, is like immediately his best friend, because this sort of getting into it, like that's, that is his jam. That is mm -hmm. his, yeah. I think he's going to get this caught. This is up my toast, up. and this is my jam. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the ecstasy of battle. Yeah. Sorry, chat, sorry. <laughs> if you donate or subscribe to Patreon, I promise not to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think yeah i think garai's just he doesn't have a he's just he's just gonna yell uh if if two's yelling there's one remaining to it, i think yeah he's just gonna just yell, a yell. he's gonna get caught up in it yeah all right the um, remaining okay. one would attack you something yeah <laughs> there's only one left all right that you can see now we can see plus somebody shooting Oof, man yes. nah i don't have any uh, I'm actually going to spend a fate to reroll that because that okay. was bad. It's not a botch, but it's bad. Um, okay. Yep. There we go. There we go. That's a nine. That is under his skill. And assuming there's no defense, it's going to be seven. They don't have great defense. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so a seven will definitely... Seven points of damage? Yeah. Seven points of damage. Still up, but uh, the bones shake and crack, and his arms seem to barely be held on through uh, the undead energies. Uh, with that said, though, he does take a crack at you, and he's going to hit and flush you block. Uh, he's going to, yeah, I'll attempt to block. See how this goes. Ah, oh, I actually did. Eight, and my skill is ten. So, yeah, blocked. Very good. Uh, in this... In this case, um, he fails, uh, fails against you, um, and then, um, yeah, it. There are two more arrows that come out of the woods. Uh, one is attacking two, and one is attacking Jim. Uh, the one attacking Jim would hit. You've uh, yeah. already done your one free defense. Is there Sorry, a penalty on the second? Free. I might uh, take the penalty. Uh, it's like a minus three penalty, I think, to okay. to uh, do more than one. But that would put his dodge 
uh, at, um, let's see real quick, make sure I have that right. Um, uh, it's not possible to make more than one defensive check against a single attack. It's possible to defend against different attacks made by yeah, enemies. Yeah, they're different. Yeah, so first defense in a combat round doesn't suffer penalty for each additional defense cumulative, cumulative penalty of three. Uh, so let's see. I'm assuming, can I use the same defense more than once? I would be okay with that because okay. you're going to be penalized. Sure, sure. All right, so that takes the 10 down to a 7. Uh because otherwise his dodge would be like four <laughs> with that penalty. Um, hey, five. So you made it. Yeah. All right. You dodged the arrow. And then um, uh, you can see that there are two skeletons in the woods. Uh, but when they miss their arrow, uh, they depart. So uh, two, there is one skeleton that uh, remains in front of you. Uh, how do you want to do this? So we're being shot at from in, in, in the darkness. And like I saw one of these figures. Is it an actual person? Um, here's what you can tell. It's not the same person that lit the effigy on fire. It's probably skeletons that have bows. Because um, you saw other silhouettes earlier that were moving around. And you could right. hear that they were out there. Uh, but there was very clearly someone who lit the effigy on fire. Um, this you know as well. Uh, it's easier for them to shoot at you all because of Garion's lantern he set down. It's harder mm. to maybe shoot into the woods, into the darkness. Right, but I imagine two's also picked up that that Garion ain't going to see shit if we put that <laughs> lantern out, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, he was he was stumbling around for he, like tripping over roots and going to have to be a piggyback you know. ride. You're going to have to carry him. <laughs> right. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and saying that, this skeleton that's in front of us is looking pretty dead, right? It's looking yeah. pretty close. Well, more dead than a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> pretty um, roughed up, almost defeated, vanquished, if you will. Okay. Um, how much light is the effigy putting off? Like, how does it make a difference to things? Do we think it does? It illuminates that entire clearing. Um, it's like a massive torch. Okay. Um, a blue flame. A blue flame. Okay. Um, hmm. Fuck it. I'll just finish off the skeleton for now. I'll focus on the skeleton. The problem at hand first, and then we'll, we'll deal with the other problems later. So um, I take a swing at it. Five again. That'll hit it. It will indeed, and it will completely fail to block. I only hit it for three points. Well, it only had two remaining, so <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Crack, crunch! The bones fall to the ground in a heap. Link runs up, puts a bomb, and it explodes, so the skeleton doesn't reform for Link to the Past. Nice. Fans. But, um, yeah. <laughs> the, um... And for our German audience in North America, there's this game, The Legend of Zelda. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> there's one episode on Encounter Roleplay where I did like a five minute dissertation to Will telling him what miles were in feet. And he's like, I know. I'm just like, well, I'm just, you know, you might just not. Just checking. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he's like, get out of here. Um, right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the skeletons are no more. Uh, and there doesn't seem to be any more shooting at you from the woods. They seem to be stumbling off. They're possibly pursuing uh, the other individual that was in the woods. Okay. Okay. Um, I think, too, still a bit fired up, knowing that there's people out there who are fucking with us. Um, would grab one of the skulls of one of these skeletons, mm -hmm. um, and he'd, he'd sort of confidently stride into the clearing and throw it, into the burning effigy and he'd uh he'd yell out um we are yeah he's like we're the slayer of your tupuna meaning your ancestors um and we're here for lord flattery bring him or you're next and then he walks back into the dark when oh, you God. say like, that in fact when you mention the word for ancestors you see the flame go out and fog rises slowly. Um, 
and <laughs> the temperature drops oh, like five degrees up. Celsius, like big drop. And yeah. it's and um. Can you explain the conversion rate on that Fahrenheit? Real quick? Yeah, so I have a program in my TI eighty three calculator, so we can do this. But uh, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah, so uh, it, and then you see almost like the trees themselves and the clearing almost fold. You can see that they kind of billow and they bow out, uh, almost like directing you forward. They can tell that you are an individual of honor, and we're defending. Uh, your battle buddy in this situation. So they're like, we have to respect that. And um, okay. they seem to be trying to show you the path forward. I'm down for this. Okay. I turn around and uh, and we are come from the forest, uh, the god of the forest is Tane. So he turn around and go, Tane shows us the way. And then sort of, you know, indicates for Garan to follow. Uh, yeah. But also, he's trying really hard not to shiver because one of my disadvantages is susceptible to cold. Yeah. So he's like, he's trying to look tough, but there's a wee bit of like <laughs> chilly. It's great. It's great. It's a cold day. Right. And so you follow you you follow through the woods as you uh, uh, go uh, all the way through the woods, uh, and you come out the other side and on the other side there is a large uh, structure the structure is made out of stone surrounding the structure is a body of water a moat if you will uh, it looks like uh, the top level most of the floors have been uh, knocked out uh, one of the walls of this uh, fortress of sorts uh, this guardhouse if you will um, it is uh, completely crumbled and you have found uh, what appears to be a moat house in the clearing hmm. that's weird it's a ruined like, moat house a ruined moat house I guess it's from the whatever war they had fought in ages mm -hmm. ago or something like the that the soldiers okay. would have used this as their hiding spot Okay. okay. any signs of life Yes, in fact, the large footprints, the large treks, uh, go up into um, go up into uh, the moat house, and uh, it it there are some lights on inside. Uh, you can see that they're lit. It's. Uh, the sun is in its final setting stage, so lights have been lit, in, uh, mm -hmm. lit and um, you don't see uh, many people um, milling about. But very clearly, you know, this this is a uh, a structure with parapets, battlements, you know, arrow slots, etc. But it's mostly in a state of disarray. It's 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 falling apart. Um, but there are very clearly people using this as a place to live. Okay, you said we like see lights through the. Through oh yes, the there, uh, on the other side of the walls, because there's a drawbridge that falls down and kind of goes across the moat. Um, mm. It it um. There's 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 lights you can see dim lights on the inside as well as in some of the towers. Okay. And if that's the case, there. I'm gonna douse douse my lantern. Like before, okay. like if, if we would have seen it, like coming through their lights up ahead, he would he douse his lantern and just do his best to follow too, without blundering into something. Is um, is there any uh, you know, like um, drawbridge down or anything like that? Is there any way to drawbridge is currently it? up? Okay. Okay. And that's the only way in and out that we can see across the water. Only one you can see, you would, uh, you could try to cross the water and then climb up over the ruined wall, the crumbled wall. Not sure how safe that would be. Yeah. Mm. Uh, you want to like circle around this thing and get a better idea of what's there. Yeah, and also like let's have a listen. You know, we even though we might go around and actually hear that old uh, flatteries in the middle of a show. Right. <laughs> you know? So we'll wander around and have a listen and see if yeah. it's like do a Ricky. There's no harm in, in a bit of reconnaissance. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think Garine's gonna he'll you know I'm gonna stay here. You go walk around. I, I don't. I'm just gonna make a lot of noise. And he's just gonna like find a place to post up that's like I don't know. You're like two or three trees into the tree line, and do his best to just listen because he can't see shit. Mm-hmm. All right. Perfect. So how does two approach? Well, he wants to very sneakily just move around this thing and uh, be as quiet and sneaky beaky as he can. And he's just really listening. I think more than anything, he's listening, looking for anyone patrolling the walls or the towers, um, and just trying to learn as much as we can from outside without alerting them as to what's going on. Okay. Uh, in You hear voices coming from inside, but it's a language unfamiliar to you. Um, There's kind of like a, a rough, rustic, you know, guttural speech, um, low tones. Every now and then you hear bombastic laughter, Every now and then you hear some, like, uh, like some ribbing, the best way to do it, like, like boos, like they're booing each other and, like, disapproving of uh, the discourse, which then quickly turns back into laughter, almost as if um, uh, there's some kind of uh, festivity going on inside. Hmm. No sound of some foppish bard that may be performing for them oh he's probably is performing for them just not in the way he wants to be doing i imagine if <laughs> i know yeah well <laughs> sounds like it <laughs> uh no um, you don't hear the bard hmm. okay i'll assume at this point that um two sort of super navigated it and he's back over to where the yep. is um we got any plans? Any ideas? So if your uh, if your theory is correct, and this you know these people made off with them because mm. the lad you know led them to him or something, maybe maybe just walking up and shouting till they come out. <laughs> that's the, like that's his best plan. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got unless you want to get a closer look and like cross over. Yeah. Mm. I do have like one idea, but I don't know because like this whole wood is supposed to be haunted, right? So even the woods people who live here are probably used to living in harmony with this stuff, but they're probably aware of the risks of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a uh, on my character sheet I've just remembered I have what's written as a kabass flute which I'm assuming is some sort of native instrument um, that's what it looked like that's why I grabbed it when I was, when I was making my character <laughs> so I'm wondering if like the sitting out in the pitch black and some strange ass flute music would be spooky do we think that would be spooky would this be like why is there music out there <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, fuck it. We could try that. We could try and spook them out. We can try Let's and spook. psych them. Yeah, because there's somebody clearly somebody who's like lighting lit that fire on the effigy. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's but try. Whoever lit their fly, fire, I doubt came back here. Otherwise, they'd be on guard. Right? Okay. Yeah, it's true. So whoever true. lit their fire is out is out there somewhere. Well. <laughs> they may be on guard. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. So should we so, just try and be just try and be creepy? See if that works. Musical. Yeah. Let's so go ahead and, and um so go ahead and, and perform with your music the way you would like to, to perform with it and we'll see how you do. Okay. So is there a particular role for this? Um, uh, I'm sure there is, but, uh, let's, let's, um, without getting too deep into it, just roll a straight, uh, D20 and tell me if you get a 10 or higher, because this is your instrument. I figure, uh, you're trying to get a 10 or less, we'll say. Uh, I spend a fight point. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, 
Wrong end. That's even. Oops. <laughs> you do well. Okay, so you start to play, and it's one of those things where you're like, all right, it's been a few years. <laughs> and then start to play. Uh, you play, oh, Danny boy. And then, um, but essentially, you hear it hush over the camp as you hit kind of like a haunting low note and then a more melodic sonorous high note. Um, it's one of those things where you slowly go up and then um, you hear a couple of voices calling out, Lola, 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 Lola. And if you recall, they mentioned that the woods are haunted by uh, a beautiful woman named Lola. And so they think there might be Lola. And there's, you see a, a bunch of little heads kind of pop up on the parapets and they're kind of looking over at the moat. They're all kind of calling out, Lola. They don't see you all at all. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is, this is working. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so two sort of keeps it up, but he, he is, he, he, he inc- is trying to increase the dynamic of what he's doing, but the plan is to make it louder and fuller, but then gradually more discordant. Right. Like he, mm. he deliberately starts throwing in some, some tang, you know, see see if that upsets them. They seem kind of confused, yeah. And then um, there's some like whispering, and then they call out. It's a word you recognize. They're like gate, gate. Should they put the gate down? Mm. Then you hear like like an older voice being like like objecting, like don't put the gate down. As, as I do gate, he plays. Louder, Ooh. And at least this, you know, like like uh, as approvingly. I mean, fuck, I've got a degree in music, and I'm not sure how I would <laughs> I would play it in an approving way. <laughs> but, bust, uh, bust out an instrument, Liam, and can, tell us though. what it sounds like. Do it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what happens is uh, the gate is lowered, and they lower the old gate, and it comes down, and um, there's um. You know, there's some like whistling, you know, almost like flirtatiously. And there's like some Lola. You see some of the guys come out. They're like looking down in the moat. There's like large frog eyes that come up and kind of look confused. Like, why are these dummies coming out and poking at the water? Yeah, okay. Now, this is a very specific question. The, uh, the, the drawbridge, is it ropes that hold it or chains? Chains. Ah, oh, fuck. I had a, I had a plan. If, you wanted, <laughs> if it involved hitch knots answer. and lashings, I would have given you like a fate point. But no. <laughs> um, okay, two has long hair. This is established in the canon. Yes. So two two puts his hair out, and he sort of playing the flute indicates um, sort of towards uh Karayan as if sort of like try and follow me sort of thing and he starts walking towards the gate trying to hunch up a bit so he doesn't look all burly whirly mm. and uh he's playing his flute trying to get as close to that fucking drawbridge as he can <laughs> um, yeah. before before they notice it's he's not Lola really is the plan okay uh and you're just playing the flute oh gosh and you're two and you're trying okay <laughs> here's how this re- <laughs> it's just too it's like yes you have long hair silk sash so does jim davis by some standards but it's just like it's like i love this though so they've been drinking i'm relying on the low light i'm relying on the low light i I get it i get it lola and like so one of these big men um well that's that works your advantage they're like lola as they see you it's just kind of like they kind of seem kind of confused and like Two or three of them kind of gather around. At this point, um, so what's your intention here? Like, how close My are you intention? willing to let them get? They don't seem aggressive. I want to try and get onto the bridge. That's my. You're plan. on the bridge. I try and, I'm on the bridge. Yep. Once I'm on the bridge, I think he'd stop blowing the flute, put it away, um, and then he's gonna do. He's gonna go into a haka. Right, he's no longer pretending to be Lola. He's Ooh. trying to be scary, fucking Tuarangi to Kiowa, and hopefully Garion will run up <laughs> at that point. And yeah. he's just gonna go full fucking. I am, I am a vengeful this... spirit. Shit, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this point, they are 
freaking the heck out. And, like, they're not, like, drawing weapons to attack you. They're just... This is, like, a display unlike anything they've ever seen. And they live in the woods, and they live with spirits, and they've, you know, uh, uh, led skeletons and light effigies and capture bards. And, you know, they, these are these are hard people. But they, they seem like... They're like, okay, 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 okay. And Garion comes running up. Mm -hmm. And then, like... The older voice, you see this older man, he, he's big too, he's got, he's lost most of his hair, he's got a wrinkled, crumpled face, and he's like pointing scoldingly at each and every one of those like, uh, you know, uh, black haired, you know, strapling, uh, beefy boys, where he's just kind of like, see, see, you listen to a flute, and it's like they always say, you hear a flute in the woods, you go chase it, you freaking summon the demons of hell to eat our souls! Take them! And he just like, he's just like, opens his shirt. He's like, eat my heart out because this is what we had coming to us, you dumb fucks. And he just kind of like, <laughs> looks around and like, scolds them. They're just, they seem like really disappointed, but also like, extremely impressed. And they're not too sure what to do. And they're like, one's about to go, Lola, but no. And they speak and, you know, kind of in like a mid and realm. One's like, um, uh, Easterner. Like, you did come from the East. They're trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. Are um, they speaking Garethi or? Yes. Or like the, just that one. Okay. <laughs> so Grind's run up as soon as, as soon as like the drawbridge lowers and two gets on it and starts doing his haka. Like that's when Grind is going to make his move while they're paying attention to him. Um, Night blind, you go right into the water. <laughs> right. <to> the <laughs> right. <laughs> Splash. Splash when he can't swim <laughs> in his chain mail. Leeches uh, cover you. No! <laughs> <laughs> um, and, like, did they react to him in any way? Like, he's going to get up on the drawbridge. So Yeah, they almost feel like they're under attack by an army, and they're just, got, but there's only two of you, so it's very clearly not an army. Uh, from near the woods, like a, a cloaked individual holding a bow comes out. The bow is down, and he's just kind of like shaking his head. He's like, "I'm on woods duty," and they lower the bridge, all because they were chasing tail. And he just kind of like judgingly looks around too, like the old man. You can tell by the resemblance; it's probably the old man's son or nephew or someone. Um, so uh, the wood folk, they kind of. Uh, they're trying to figure out. They're like, well, what can we do for you? Like, what what do you need? Yeah, I, I was I was curious, like, how long we were going to keep up the the charade of like this, like that two's a spear, a vengeful spirit, come after them because uh, like Orion's like he's willing. They've to never seen anyone like him. He's covered in tattoos and he's killed skeletons. There's eyewitnesses to this. Sure, I know the sure. skeletons are already dead, but they're more. <laughs> he dead already now. is a vengeful spirit of the wood. Crowd. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, I think Orion's just going to let. To the stories his of his intellect that. have grown too. So. Yeah, and then uh, in, you know, in a lull, he'll just be like, uh, "We're here for the uh, for the Lord Flatteroy." They kind of seem confused, and they're like, "Well, what is a Flatteroy?" And they're like, "There's no lords here, but just describe him." He uh, sings. He's you know he's sort of a. We don't have any singers, but we do have screamers. Um, how would he okay. look? Big fella, little fella? Yeah, does does Garan have a physical description of Flatteroy? Uh more or less. So you less. Yeah, so um like the like in the like Yeah, the you can describe in the uh what you see in the, the one shot primer. Yeah, sort of shortish hair. Out of his fabric. Uh fancy uh mustache, um mm. possibly silver and blue uh clothes. You know, yes, pike. he is currently sobering up. He is violent and he is angry and he has more problems than he's worth and he's grabby and handsy and we don't like him. Oh. He's, he's here. He's here. Yeah, he was stumbling in through our woods, uh, yelling at the top of his lungs, chasing one of our people, and Elamon comes forward with the silver eyes and the hair. Uh -huh. um, he's chasing after our people and then... Um, he, uh, we decided to lock him up in the basement till he, you know, the demons run through his system and he can uh, go back into society if, if we decide he should. Like, I mean, he's clearly a menace. Yeah, he's possessed. Uh, by the demon in the bottle, and they they smelled. 
Yeah. It was like <laughs> mental note. He's not going to yeah. offer them the booze that he brought. With them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. <clears throat> well, um, yeah, we're kind of here for him. We'll take him off your hands. Uh, what's he worth to you? Why are you here for him? And this is where you get to think. What would you tell yeah. him? Yeah. When they say that, two slaps his hands down on the bridge and starts to hucker again, eyeballing them. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I can't control them. You know, like I just. I just live with them. You they, know? <laughs> yeah. They. They see this, and this time they're they're more impressed. But it's also, you know, they're kind of like. They're kind of like banging on their chest, and it's one of those things. Some of them stand absolutely still, and like their eyeballs get real big. They're like, "All right, he sees us. He's gonna eat us. You know what? Maybe we don't want to get eaten." And there's a lot of them. There's maybe you know thirty of them here, but uh, uh, but it's also they can tell two is not one who's afraid and may be a demon of the forest. So the old guy is kind of like rolling his eyes at like them. There go he goes. So. We don't like people coming into our woods. We don't like people harassing our folk. Um, we need some sort of assurance from you that we stand to gain something. We would like to get rid of him, and also he probably won't last here that long uh, since we, uh, well, we're not going to feed him. Mm. Okay. What do you want? Uh, they think about that. They're like, we would like... Um, we would like uh, to celebrate uh, our our special days in the open, because they don't let us do that. Um, we would like um, the uh, retreaters, that's what they refer to, those that live at Travia's retreat, we would like them not to hunt in our woods. We'd like them to rely on other other methods of obtaining their food, because our food... Uh, our food, you know, it's it's our source. We we don't we don't want them to. Oops, sorry, I accidentally called my wife on my phone, and I didn't mean to. I was trying to get to my notes. Um, uh, we we want um, we want um, those in uh, those in the the towns to uh, remember our story of our people that kept the woods. Okay. Or their people, their ancestors, because they don't do a good job remembering their ancestors. We remember their ancestors, though, and we know what they fought for. But they don't even remember their names, nor do they keep track of them. They have no respect for their lineage. So these are a lot of demands. How are you going to fulfill them? Uh, so we're clear on the first one. Like They want to have like celebrate their holy days like... In, in the village near the inn or or just like not be run out where of where we choose where we choose okay i've got an idea we have one of the most highly in demand bards here who probably wants to be free because if not he will die so maybe a uh look you're gonna start singing about these motherfuckers and you're gonna start spreading the word and telling their tales and you're gonna, you know, or fuck it, you starve. And if you don't, not only will they come for you, two will come for you and Garion. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, all of this, like you're, um, and you, a lot of people are upset that you're gone. So you need to start, you know, stop chasing after blue eyed boys in the forest and maybe start singing about the ghosts in the forest. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> a good idea. It's yeah. the best idea I can think of. No, I, I think that's a great idea. Yeah, well, it's, you know. Maybe convey, maybe convey it to them of like, well, we'll do what we can. We're not from around here, but that barge you have in there, he could be really, uh, I don't know, handy at spreading word of uh, what's gone on here and whose ancestors that they've forgotten and make sure that um, everybody knows that these are your woods. Don't come in them. He's then, just going to test to see how that plays out then I think the only way to finish this is with one of our most sacred rituals, the art of the contract. We bring the bard up, he agrees, and he signs to it. Uh, and you see a big stone that they roll out, and the stone has a lot of different marks on it. The marks all over the stone, 
uh, you can tell they're like people's individualized marks that they chisel. They're like, we're going to bring the bard up and you will make him sign. Um, and then he will agree to sing the songs of our people, the songs of his ancestors, and uh, to not chase any more of our people into the woods. Um, and then they, they kind of come up. Yeah. And they drag a mud-covered, soaked, uh, frazzle-haired. His mustache has gone from curly to droopy. Um, <laughs> and a um, a shambles. Yes, yes, it, a shamble man. And um, it, he 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 comes up and he looks really upset, almost you know, almost mad. And as soon as he comes up, he's like, "How dare they!" And then he calls out to you. He's like, "Kill every one of them." Uh, that's not how this is going to go down. Mm, you know. He seems disappointed. <laughs> 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 yeah. you're, lucky, you're lucky to be walking out of here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so I get a go now, and he kind of stumbles forward. And you know, it, they um, as he tries to cross the rock, uh, the man in the cloak who set the effigy on fire <laughs> gets brutish hands on him, and he's like, "Yep, make mm-hmm. him sign. Mm-hmm. Tell him what he must do." Yeah. So um, in order for you to walk out of here, and uh, you know, with all of your parts and uh, everything. You're going to have to uh, sign this rock somehow. I don't, presumably they have a chisel and you're going to tell everybody about them, sing their praises, tell everybody to stay out of these woods. These are their woods. They live here. They don't want anybody hunting. Nobody taking firewood. They're not praiseworthy. How's that again? They're not praiseworthy. Look what they did to me for nothing. I don't it's know about not, that. It's not about what they've done to you. It's about what they're not going to do with you. That's that's convincing to him. He's like, hmm, you do have a point. He's like, but how will I get my vengeance? It's not any vengeance. You're not you're not going to be satisfied with this. You're you're walking away with your life. Will you promise to tell the story differently to others? Like you're not going to say what actually went down here. You'll keep my name clean. Uh, I just look at two. It's like <laughs> we're gonna tell uh, Al- uh, Amalthea that uh, you know we found you and state that we did because I'm not you know I'm not gonna lie to her. You know. But when you oh, leave God. her and you leave and you travel your tales and you go wherever it is you came from or you're headed to, you will not besmirch my name and reputation. Well, if you came here and you learnt the tales of the ancestors that you have to sing then the way in which you came is irrelevant if that doesn't need to be brought up in the story. Yeah, you came here and you learned the true story of the ancestors and now you're going to go out and sing that true story of the ancestors. And the fact that, you know, you're thinking like a dick and not with your head is, is notwithstanding. <laughs> He's like, I have no memory of any of this, but I will say waking up in the basement of a moat house is... Uh, a rude awakening indeed. Um, and he takes the chisel from old brute hands and just... And it uh, chisels his mark. Uh, and with that, um, he uh, he is now honor-bound to sing the songs of the, uh, the people. Now, night has fallen. How do you intend to get back home? Or are you going to try to stay here? Something tells me they wouldn't welcome us, but I don't know. I don't know. Got any ideas, too? I mean, Two's got direction sense. He could get us back out. It's just um, in the dark in a forest with a guy who can't see shit. Right, yeah, it's already dark. (laughs) I've been in the the forest at night. It's not easy. (laughs) Yes, <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of roots and branches you don't see. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not too keen on walking through at night, but you know maybe we could find a place that's. And then Garion thinks about it for a bit. Oh yeah, these woods are haunted with skeleton soldiers and a fairy spirit, and maybe 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 we try and stay the night under the guise that you know this fellow needs to learn the stories. And like, you have, have a, yeah, yeah. I'd say you have some options too. So. You can ask them uh, what the safest way back is, in their opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, you could ask Flatteroy what he thinks, but he's clearly confused and doesn't even know exactly where he is. Um, 
Or you could try to go back the way you came, um, but you would have to go through the haunted woods. Yeah. And, or you could ask them if you could stay till morning. Well, maybe maybe we pitch it to them. Like, you know, we need to get back. Uh, we can take ourselves back in the morning or alternatively you can show us the way mm -hmm. and give them the opportunity to offer a solution. Yeah. And also, you know, if you showed us the way, then that's demonstrates to you know the people around the retreat that they're willing to live kind of mm. copacetic and harmony with them you know like they say they're not the, a threat they say the best the easiest way back is by river and so you know there's a moat and the moat there's a body of water and it kind of goes around they go if you follow uh that river and you know that it runs through because there was a bridge and it mm -hmm. it would connect so they're like the easiest way back is to take the river there's no skeletons on the river no Oh, in that case, we can just have a little lamp going. And we can just wander our way down the river. Easy yeah. peasy. No lights, they say. <laughs> no lights. Oh, only okay. the moon. You could Arrows. light the lights. No but campfires. the arrows might find their way from the shore. Yeah. Uh, campfires are safe they... on this side of the wall, not on the other side. Okay. All right. Are there any boats or anything? Do they have a, a spare boat that we could float down river on? They do. Uh, they're old and they're not in great shape, but um, they are good enough. Can we trade oh, them some man. of this food for one of them? Absolutely. Yeah. They would love the food. Yeah, it's, it smells great. It was prepared like not even two, three hours ago. You know? Yeah. They eat it and then they're like, this food tastes a little blessed. No, no, I mean, yeah, yeah it, is, it is. I should have said something before. <laughs> no, they're, they're like, no. Yeah. yeah, so they, um, yeah, they, uh, they, they take the food and then, uh, they give you, uh, the boats they know have no holes in them. And they even give you, uh, oars so that you can paddle your way back. Hey. They let you know Do the current's have... in your favor. Awesome. Okay. All right. Do you have any points in sailing by any chance? No. Nah. Yeah, uh, I almost did because of where he's from, but he is not. He is not a sailor or a boater or anything <laughs> like. <that. laughs> um, I mean, how hard could it be? You know, just you're going the with the current. Don't um, fall over. Yeah, just push so away the... from the shores. Yeah, yeah. So what we're going to uh, figure uh, as far as possibly go wrong. What could possibly go wrong at night? <laughs> Come on, yeah. haunted forest, <laughs> horse the forest, no lights. Yeah, nah, all good. <laughs> no problem. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I think that they're not going to let us stay here. It doesn't sound like, and I don't want to light lights. This is, the, you know, better this than stumbling through. Uh, and risk falling in like if we're trying yeah. to follow the bank and we could fall in no, i don't want to do absolutely. that absolutely yeah so you know i agree here's how it goes down um you're gonna need one i want one of you to roll me a d20 so you don't have sailing as a skill and i'm sure there's a simpler canoeing check um but i'm gonna say um that this is this is essentially like a dexterity check um, having done a lot of canoeing myself, um, it's more dexterity than muscle. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'll let you make it. It's it's going to be a straight roll. Let me know what you get. Okay. So I have the... Uh, I bought all the fate point special abilities. <laughs> uh, and so I have like an improved attribute mm -hmm. uh, that will, that will uh, improve it by two, I believe. Yes. So okay. that would put Garion's... It's dexterity, you said? Yeah. Okay. Yes. That gives him a 12 uh, for that. Is it me? Uh, I'm a teen. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go for it with the uh, with a 12 there. Um, and it, it's... So let me see. Yeah, because agility is more like body control, like uh, grace, as opposed to like dexterity, which is more like manual dexterity, I'm assuming. I love that they have two skills for it, but I don't quite know where the dividing line is. <laughs> I guess what so, I mean, what I really mean, Grant, is am I rolling with a base of 10 or a base of 14? Base uh, of 14. Which, which one? <laughs> All right, I'll take the agility. So that raises it to a 16. 
uh, spin the fate point and let's see 15 <laughs> could have been bad <laughs> it's still tight <laughs> right it's still it's still under <laughs> Um, so you, you make it and it is by the skin of your teeth and, yep. uh, you're like fighting. You're like, Oh, Oh, turning. You dodge a couple big, big, um, hit rocks. a couple of snags. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, it's one of those things where, Oh, and then as you come to a familiar clearing, uh, where the river bends around and, um, it, it meets the the bridge that you yourselves built, you hear a haunting flute playing. Oh. First, like, did you break that flute out again, too? <laughs> Two, two's back to, to mumbling <laughs> incantations. <laughs> 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 uh, how is, uh, is Flatteroy reacting to this? He's like they play masterfully. All right. Play than I did. Is uh, can we tell where it's coming from? Like, is it getting louder or? Uh, it's coming from. Uh, it looks like uh the far side of the bridge. There is a a feminine form sitting on the bank dipping her legs in the water and playing as you approach oh hmm. like we're gonna pass by her then do we know anything about the legend like why yeah. how did she end up here and all that sort of stuff do we know what what, what that's about uh flatteroy might so flatteroy is like is that the is that the the woodland woman Lola, Lola. Hmm. she leads men to watery graves I wouldn't trust her she has stolen many hearts I have heard and he knows a song and he sings a little song about Lola he sings a little song about Lola of the wood Lola who has loved many men Lola who has loved most to drown those men um, and you see with your own eyes uh, a a fairy folk it is a nymph uh mm. playing on the bank of the river as you approach does it look like she's going to let us uh pass or um as you approach her eyes see flatteroys sees garions then sees twos and she dives into the water and disappears as if she was never there Mm-hmm. I the music stops. The music stops. I think I don't know. I, I, you know, sometimes like you can leave out little like you know, leave a pint of beer to the gnomes so that they'll mm. cobble your shoes or something like that, or or like pour out a libation uh, for something mm-hmm. like. I don't know if like I don't want to make it worse, but Grind feels like if she's just gonna let us pass, that feels like something that deserves a gift or a, or a, or a token of appreciation. Um, let me see what he's got real quick. What would a nymph appreciate? Because uh, he's got a lot of fine perfumes and clothes and sashes and the like. Ooh, so you're looking to leave a gift? He'd like to leave a gift, uh, as a as, at the very least, as like a hey, thanks for not drowning us, kind of thing. Okay. The only uh, thing I can think of that I have is I could give her my flute. <laughs> Even though we know she plays. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, everything I have is not do well in water. Hand mirror. She would absolutely love a hand mirror. A hand mirror. Yeah, I think a hand mirror and a flute could just like put set on the banks where she was sitting. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. I can do that. 
Flatteroy feels that uh, it is folly to leave a gift for the nymph, but he says, you know, he what does he know about relationships and kind of uh, is sulking in his ill behavior. Uh, you yeah. can tell there is a repentant air about him. Um, <laughs> you, know, I, I, you know, I don't know where you come from, Grind, but where I come from, you know, when a lady shows you favor, you should, you do something for her, right? Like it doesn't have to be a lot, just a little thing. You know, it's a social grace, as it were. And I'm, you know, people are people. You know, I don't know anything about the nymph, but she seems like she might appreciate this. So, um, one second. Yeah, yeah. We pull over, um, drop off the gifts, and she drowns us. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things. I imagine that you set down the mirror and uh, turned and kind of explained to Flatteroy. And when you look back and motion to it, it's already gone. Uh, but you can see f uh, fresh flowers blooming in the spot where uh, the mirror once was. And yeah. with that, uh, there are no further shenanigans or... Uh, uh, glimmerings or glamours on the way back to Travia's retreat. Um, the next morning, uh, Lady Amalthea has arrived to collect the uh, haggard bard. Um, he says he doesn't feel much for singing for the wedding, and um, the good lady herself um, is uh, showing great appreciation. Uh, she's a little... Uh, miffed at first when she sees the bill for uh, the good drink and the good food and has heard the tales of, of gambling and uh, her reputation on the line. However, she buys everyone four bottles of that good wine too. Like she sees it, you can see her brow furrow, then she's like, you know, it's a wedding. We're all in. Thank you so much for returning the bard. <laughs> yeah, so we had to... Uh... I don't know, make some promises for y'all in order to get him back. <laughs> we volunteered you. Um, for one, the wood folk want to be able to worship wherever they, they want. They don't want to feel like they got to keep it hidden or be afraid. They want to you know, express themselves in their uh, sincerely held beliefs freely. Second, nobody can come in those woods. That's theirs. They don't want any hunting, no wood gathering, no charcoal burning, no people going out there for flings. You know, that seems fair. Uh, and also, uh, Flatteroy has to uh, spread the word of their good nature, as well as the uh, exploits and deeds of their ancestors, who apparently are y'all's as well. Like, I don't it, why, why, why aren't you respecting your ancestors? I don't know uh, that he's going to, like, be impertinent with her. But little, like, yeah, yeah. Little Goose comes up meekishly to you. Old Gus behind her. The violinist to the corner and she snatches her little handbag back and old Gus lets out a big laugh and that's where we cut to black and in the one shot <laughs> some deals were made so I hope you had fun with an impromptu session of the dark guy uh, an original one shot by Grimms. I thought it was funny I was just like oh, we'll see how this goes and since she's the religious one she's like how dare you make how deals with you? them <laughs> uh, but no it's good you, you made all the right decisions good. so it's good. hope you had fun how did you enjoy oh. an impromptu <laughs> dark <Pretty> guy <laughs> I enjoyed it. I uh, I liked the whole the yeah, the whole walking through the woods buzz and the fayness of it all, and um, I had a good sort of folklorey vibe to it. Um, and I also appreciate that you, as a games master, allows like creative problem solving. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah, ingenuity. Yeah. 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 <laughs> No, yeah, yeah. That's, that's good, especially like given the complexity of the system, just being able to say like, you know what, this is what we're going to do. Like, I have no idea how this works, but this going to use the system that you have to mm -hmm. resolve an action and move on. I yeah. Like and, and for those of you watching, what I did is I just downloaded the quick start rules for free. I read them uh, over. Um, I booted up a stream and then we put together an adventure from scratch and uh looked at looked at uh the supplements we had to make this happen so let's go around let everyone know who we are where we can find each other online uh liam you kick us off 
Um, I'm always caught with my pants down when this happens. Um, you can find me over, uh, well, my main place is toatabletop.com. Um, it is a website that links to everything that I'm involved with. So my Mud and Blood podcast, um, social media, things like that. Uh, if I'm honest, I'm most active sort of on a um, combination of Discord and, and Twitter. Um, but yeah, just, just come scope it out. Uh, one place you can always come and talk to all of us here is actually at the uh, Web DM Plays um, uh, Patreon Discord. So come along there, have a chat, or hit me up on, on Twitter at uh, underscore bogan over underscore. Um, and this, whatever, this, 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 yeah, whatever, whatever. You'll find me. <laughs> you'll find me. <laughs> if you Jim? want to find him, you'll find him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I am a co-host and creative director for uh, WebDM, the channel where you're watching this, and uh, whose WebDM plays Patreon. I help support uh, all our players and uh, backstage folk as well. Um, I, of course, have a YouTube channel, WebDM, where we talk about all kinds of RPG-related stuff. You can check us out there, as well as our podcast, WebDM Talks. So I feel like I'm all over the place now in a way that I didn't used to be, so... <laughs> Yeah, that's that's who I am. Thank you. <laughs> Lastly, my name's Grant Ellis. I'm the host here on WebDM Plays. You'll see me in the after show. Uh, do tune in to uh, Dragon Talk tomorrow. I'm the guest on uh, D&D's channels and podcasts where we talk about what we do here on WebDM Plays, as well as my upcoming campaign setting Grimworld by 2C Gaming that I was lead designer on. Uh, follow me on Twitter at WisePapaGrant. I'm here and I'm there. So hope you enjoy the show. As always, uh, the best way to support the show is through our Patreon, patreon.com slash webdmplays. Uh, also, check out the books and the recycling through the link. Do download those quick start rules. They're free. They're beautiful. There's lots of good artwork. It comes with pregens and an adventure ready to go. Uh, so without further ado, thank you and see you next week. <laughs>